Welcome to this Notes Master Support Network video on creating a quiz. Now, in our resources, many of us add a link to a third party website to create a quiz, and we do that um, to add a little degree of uh, interactivity and testing to our resources. Uh, it also serves to be a nice way of um, bringing in outside elements to your resource. So you may create something on equations, but send the learner off to a different website to take a test on equations that covers the material you've already presented. Quite often though, some of you can't find a, a quiz on a third party website, or as is customary in these programs, you have a resource and you also have a quiz to explain each objective. So that is, I would have a resource on explain what pollution is, and I would have a quiz based on my resource that I, as the author, have also created. So, this is based on the Zambian curriculum, but it's relevant for all Notes Master curriculums in all Notes Master programs. So let's have a look. Let's create a quiz, and uh, we'll follow some of the steps and use some outside elements, and hopefully you can practice and share your quizzes as well. Add new content. So I'm starting in my workspace, okay? This is my personal space. I'm going to click Add New Content. So I can create a resource, a class note, a lesson, a lesson plan, any of those matter. I can link, so I can link to a third party website, so I can link a web page to that particular objective about pollution. Or I can click create a quiz. Put my title and I'll do a little pollution quiz. Pollution. And I click create. So the page loads up. This is my quiz creator here on Notes Master. So let's have a look at some of the areas. I can save as you'll be custom, cancel, I can share as you'll be custom to as well with the resource, same, and I can copy and you can delete. So all of these you're familiar with. You can take a test, so you can take your test once you've created it, and of course then you can edit your test once you've created it. Question types, multiple choice, multi-response, true-false, blank, match. You're prompted, drag and place the correct matching text or image next to the right answer. Type the correct answer to fill in the blank space. So you're given a little prompt as to what each question type is. And then you're told to type your true-false question here. True-false. Okay, let's start with multiple choice. Multiple choice. Type your question. Um, is pollution good for the planet? Question mark. So that's my question. I scroll down. Put in my first answer option. Yes, it is. Second answer option. Sometimes it is. Maybe it is. No, it is not. So I've got my four answers. I have space for five, but four is fine. Three is fine if I wish as well. I then select the correct one. Is pollution good for the planet? Well, in my book, no, it is not. Click on the correct answer, which is D. I then have some options below that. I can give feedback. So when the student clicks this question, I can give them feedback, which could be well done. If they get the answer incorrect, I could give them feedback as well, which could be sorry. That's wrong. And if I want to, I can give them a hint to the question. Add a hint. Um, what do you think? <laughs> Something very simple so you can see. And once I'm finished with all of these, and you can add any text that you want, just review my question, make sure I've actually selected the correct answer. So D is here. E is left blank, so don't worry about that. And here is my question. Click Add Question. And that's a summary of my question. Is pollution good for the planet? Yes, it is. Sometimes it is. Maybe it is. No, it is not. I can then have a take my test. Here is my question. 
Here is the hint. So this gives you an idea of how you may want to use the hint. You do not have to use the hint, but you may. And I click my answer. Sometimes it is. Click. It's highlighted orange. If I want to change it, click another one. It's highlighted orange. And when I'm done, I click this arrow here. And then it tells me, sorry, that's wrong. And the answer I selected was maybe it is. The correct answer is no, it is not. And that's what flashes green. I have a number of options now. If I want to edit my quiz, what do I do? I click edit and there is some options that you see here. If I want to edit the question itself, I put my mouse over this pen, click on that, and you see I can edit my question here. Other things that I can edit are allow players to review answers. So if I have a quiz with a number of questions, I can allow the players to go back and review the answers. Equally, if I have a quiz with a number of questions, I can have all answers given at the end of the quiz. So that is to say I would go through questions 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And I would then be able to take them and at the end would I get the answer. I can also set a time limit for my quiz questions here, 5, 10. Select a time limit if I wanted to. Okay, let me create a few more questions for you and show you how some of these features work. If I want to add a new question, I would select add new question. Okay, and then I can choose if I do another multiple choice. Is plastic a pollutant? Question mark. I could write yes I could write no I could write depends how it is recycled and I could write never so very simple easy clear-cut answers I could do my feedback again which could be brilliant I could do my feedback if it's incorrect Sorry. And I could leave a hint. Is plastic good in your household? Something very simple. Is plastic good in your household? Do you recycle your plastic at home? Do you have a problem recycling your plastic? Check your question, your spelling, etc. And then you click add question. And once you click add question, you now see you have two questions here. So if I want to add another one, I click add a new question. I'll try a multiple response. Multiple response, in this case, or multi-response as it's written here, is there are more than one correct answer. That's what it means. So which can cause pollution? So, which can cause pollution? Let's put petrol. Let's put plastic. Let's put paper. Let's put waste. And let's this time use E. Let's put oxygen. Now, it is important that you remember to select your correct answer. Okay, my correct answer here is oxygen. Click correct. If you want to leave your feedback, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. You don't need to leave a hint at all. Okay, so my correct answer here is oxygen in multi-response. But this is a multi-response. So perhaps I want to change one of these. Is paper a pollutant? Well, paper can be a pollutant. Um, let's say steam. Steam is not necessarily deemed a pollutant because it goes up into the air and it's just water vapor. So steam pollution is not 
The same, obviously, as waste pollution, plastic pollution, and petrol pollution. So we can pick steam and we can pick oxygen. So I have two responses here because this is a multi-response. Select the correct answers from the choices below. Add question. Now, if you think you've made a mistake in any of your previous questions, remember just click the pen and you go back. And here you see I have not selected a correct answer. So in this question, select one answer from the choices below. Is plastic a pollutant? Yes, no, depends how it's recycled. Never. If plastic is a pollutant, I'd put yes as my answer to select. This is a multiple choice, so only one of them. So in this case, your student, if they think, depends how it is recycled, is close to yes, because plastic is not a pollutant if it's recycled okay, you may want to have a look at that, how you're writing your question when you go back and review. So perhaps you may want to say, um, is plastic a pollutant? Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Well, no is incorrect because we know it is. Never, or well, we know that's incorrect. So if you only have three options, then let's just put this one here. So make sure your answers are clear so the student knows which one to select. And having come back and edited this question now, I click Save. So I have my three questions, some with four options, some with three, some with five. Let's add one more for this time. True or false? And let's continue. Is coal a pollutant? And the type of question we're asking is a true or false. So we would ask it in a slightly different way. We would perhaps pose the question or make a statement. Coal is a pollutant. Is this true or false? So write it the way you would like to or how your learners would like to. So if you're posing a question, is coal a pollutant versus coal is a pollutant? It's up to you, but make sure it's easily understood by your students. Is coal a pollutant? Question is true. Question is false. Coal is a pollutant. We select true. Correct answer feedback. You could type if you wish. Well done. And again, we have the hint here. We add our question. The next thing we can look to do, having added our question here, is go for one more. Blank. Type the correct answer to fill in the blank space. I could if I wish. So the correct answer is um, something the student will type in here. So you would type the question, which could be um, water can be blank. So this is perhaps you would just do a little underlined space for drinking. So my blank would be water can be recycled for drinking. So I would type R-E-C-Y-C-L-E, -E, recycled here. And you would type it, the reason I spell it out, is if you type it incorrectly and they type it correctly here, it will still be judged as wrong by the system. So make sure you have put your spelling the same as them. That includes use of capitals, okay? So water can be recycled for drinking. So your feedback would be well done or excellent or whatever you choose. And the hint could be very helpful. Um which is you're prompting them to guess what recycled could be um, using a game. Something like that. Whatever you think would make your students cotton on to the answer. Using a game or using it again. We add a question. And the last thing I want to show you is we could do matching. If you select matching, you can type your match question here. But I'll do a little separate tutorial on matching. So explore the others and I'll do a little part two on matching. I just want to jump back to multiple choice. And I just want to show you, you can upload an image. 
So, what is in the image? Question mark. So, I would click upload. And then let's say I look for an image on my computer, something with plastics in. Click on this plastic image, click open, and you see it's uploaded here. I would then type my options, wood pollution. Let's say I then do plastic pollution. Let's say and do recycling and let's say then do a picnic a nice day for a picnic something that's perhaps some people tend to do in their multiple choice obviously wrong so we select our correct answer plastic pollution we can do our hints and feedback if we wish and we click add question. For those of you, as a little view of the editor, if I go to add one more question, if you're doing a math question, I know this isn't necessarily relevant for pollution, but for those of you doing math questions, here in our editor you see you can link to certain things, you can insert a YouTube video to play, you can upload an image from your file manager, you can insert images as we have done before into this editor space. So if I wanted to do uh, a math equation for for, for the relevant um, what is I would click our equation editor here it'll pop open I click here half plus a half click OK and in our answer space, you see there is an equation editor here for you to set an equation answer here. So if you're doing a math multiple choice question, then you can use the equation editor to insert if you wish. And I'll pop one in here. And we see we have our answers. Okay, so detailed formulae can be used when creating a quiz. So although this example is for pollution, maths, sciences, chemistry, the quiz creator also caters for that. So let us add our question and let us now immediately save and then we go and let's take our quiz. Preview our test. Is pollution good for the planet? No it is not. Move on. Shows me I got it right. Next one. Is plastic a pollutant? Never. Click on it. Shows me I've got it wrong. Next one. Which can cause pollution? This is a multi-choice. So, plastic can, steam can, or waste can, petrol can. Oh, they're all wrong. Now, the reason this question is written like this is to give you a degree of understanding. Which can cause pollution? I've written the question the wrong way. So steam and oxygen are the correct answers, but in actual fact, steam and oxygen cannot cause pollution. It is petrol, plastic, and waste that cause pollution. So when creating your quiz questions, do take care to make sure you've put it the right way round. So we can then go back and edit this question because the student will look for which can cause pollution and the student, as you see here, would have selected the correct answers for the way you've written the question, but the way you have set up your answers is the wrong way. So we'll go back and change these, but it's an important concept for you to see. You see I'm on three out of seven questions, so I'll carry on. Is coal a pollutant? True. Well done. Next. What can be for drinking. Water can be something for drinking. Hint, using it again. So if I type recycled, because obviously I know the answer, click answer. Oh, now, what has happened here? I have thought that I've written recycled, R-E-C-Y, but I have spelt it incorrectly. 
So in this example, I'm showing you that you need to match the spellings in the same way that you have written them. Okay? So this is an important point. If you type the spelling wrong, they will get it wrong if they type it correctly. So they have to match it, and that's also case sensitive. Let's move to the next one. What is in the image? So we have an image here. We see if I put the mouse over the image, this happens. So I click on it, and our image expands for us. So if you are doing an English comprehension or any kind of comprehension where you want to upload a body of text and you want persons to read it, take a screenshot of that text, upload it as an image, and it can be expanded, and the questions, the comprehensions can be written one at a time. Okay? So I would select plastic pollution, and I'm correct. And here's our maths one. What is half plus a half? One. And at the end, what you see here is a score. Four out of seven. Okay? And that's my time limit here. One minute 47 left. If, just to quickly end, I allow players to review the answers, and I all answers given at the end of quiz, this is what our quiz looks like. Preview test. I would select one. Move on to the next one. Move on to the next one. We know that this is the back to front question that we did. Move on to the next one. Move on to the next one. Let's type this correctly now. Click my answer. Move on to the next one. Plastic pollution. And here I am at the last question. And here I get four out of seven. Now, it gives me the option to review the quiz. So all my questions are given at the end. That's my score at the end. If I review the quiz, I can go through it back to the beginning. Is pollution good for the planet? Red is what I selected. Green is the correct answer. Again. Again. Now, what's wrong with this question? There's no question mark. So remember, I've tried to show you a few elements when doing a quiz, how precise we need to be. Is cola pollutant? If that's a question, let's get it right and put a question mark in. We go over and we go over and we go over. Okay? So we get to do that by adding players to review answers and all answers given at end of quiz. So that's how we can do these two options. So play around with your quiz. You can then obviously click share to share it with any of the groups that you're in. And you make sure you can save it. So this is an introduction to quizzes. It's quite a long video. I do apologize for that. But I wanted to give you a wider sense of some of the things you can get right with a quiz and some of the things you can get wrong with a quiz, okay? So practice, share them, and we look forward to reviewing them.